Welcome to the Tool Review Channel, and for today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a Channel Lock versus Klein, and we are going to be comparing their combination pliers. Uh, so to start off the video here, we have the Klein Tools 12098 EINS combination pliers, and then we have the Channel Lock 3248 combination pliers right there. And I believe these are roughly both about an eight and a half, maybe eight and three quarter um in size so they're pretty much identical when it comes down to the size now the clients these are the um thousand volt rated handles whereas the kinebec or excuse me the channel lock are just the standard gripped handles i don't believe that they are insulated the packaging doesn't say anything about them being insulated um so there is that little bit of a difference um, but you can get the clients with just the standard grip uh, just the standard dipped handles, and you can also get them with the journeyman style handles as well. Uh, we'll first start off by taking a look at the Klein. You can see you have your circle cutout right there. You have a fairly large uh, cutting, you have fairly large cutting knives right there. You also see you have a very small rivet right there, and it is super close to the cutting knives. Uh, so when you're needing to cut through material, it is going to be a little bit easier to do uh, with that rivet there. Whereas versus the channel lock, as you can see, that rivet is quite far back uh, from the cutting knives and it's going to be a little bit harder to cut through some material. Now you can see they have that circular cutout with the teeth right there, so if you need to grip onto a bolt, a nut, or whatever, that's what you're gonna be able to use right there. Both pliers do feature that, as you can see right there. And then the both pliers do also, the teeth don't exactly meet on them as well, which is nice, so it does allow you to grip onto some wire and get on uh, some nice twist. Now, both the channel lock and the Klein, We'll go ahead and take a look at the nose on the plier. Both feature a crossed hatch design, as you can see right there. So instead of the teeth being parallel, the cross hatching is going to allow you to grip onto some wire, um, or if you're gripping onto like a fish tape or whatever, it's gonna allow you a better grip than when the teeth are parallel. And when generally when the teeth are parallel on the nose of the pliers, uh, they do tend to slip a lot easier. Uh, so the both tools do feature a crimper. So there is the Klein crimper right there. And then the channel out crimper is basically the same as well. Um, and you know, both tools are made in the USA, uh, which is nice. Um, like I said, there's about three different versions of the Klein you can get. And as far as I'm aware, there's only about one variation, maybe two variations. I believe you can get a thousand volt rated that has the standard yellow and red handles uh, from channel lock as well. Um, so that is pretty much it. Um, the, the client obviously is going to tell you to uh, have some more warning on it just simply because it's an insulated tool, whereas the channel lock just basically has made in the USA and made the USA on the handles, uh, which is about it. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the detail on the tools. Now we'll get to some, uh, cut, we'll go through cutting some wire with these uh, and see which one does uh, cut, cuts through it the best. So we're gonna first start off with channel locks and we're going to start off with some 18 gauge uh, solid wire right there. And the channel locks, as you see, have no problem uh, whatsoever when you're cutting through them. And we're gonna go ahead and do that with the Klein. Uh, and you'll notice right away with the Klein, you don't hear the cut when you're going through that material. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that one more time with the Klein. You can see you don't hear it uh, versus the channel lock when you go and cut through it. You have that snapping sound when you're going to cut through the plier, or excuse me, when you're going to cut through the wire. So that was with our 18 gauge solid wire. Now we'll go ahead and bring in some 14 gauge stranded wire right here. And we'll go ahead and use the clines first. And we'll go ahead and cut through that 14 gauge stranded wire without any issue with the clines. So now we're gonna hopefully have the same result with the channel lock and we do again have no problem cutting through that 14 gauge strand of wire and again the snapping sound is present with the channel lock so while we have the channel lock in our hand we're going to go ahead and bring in these 14 gauge solid wire and we'll go ahead and chop through that with the channel locks and then we'll go ahead and do the same with the clines and as we can see they have both have no problem getting through that 14 gauge uh, solid wire. So now we're going to bring in some 12 gauge stranded wire right here. And again, we'll go ahead and chomp through that with the Klein. You can hear a slight snapping sound when you go to cut through it, um, but definitely not as loud as you're going to have with the um, channel lock cutting through uh, that 12 gauge stranded wire. So we'll put him to the side and we will bring in our 12 solid wire uh, right there. Definitely a, a quite louder of a snap sound going through that with the channel locks and we'll do it with the Knipex and it's definitely a lot softer of a uh, snapping sound when we're cutting through that. So now we'll go ahead and bring in our 10 gauge stranded wire right here and we'll go ahead and chop through that. Um, 
and those guys, those clients have no problem getting through that whatsoever. And same thing with the channel lock. They both have an easy time getting through that 10 gauge stranded wire. So now we'll go ahead and bring in our 12 solid. And while we have the uh, channel locks, we'll go ahead and cut through that. And you definitely can feel that cut when you're going through the thicker gauge wire. Uh, whereas the clines, you can kind of feel it. Uh, but And you can definitely hear the cutting and that snapping sound when you uh, the wire size increases. But you don't definitely don't feel it as much as you do uh, when it comes to the channel locks. So we'll set that guy off to the side. And we will bring in some thermostat wire. And we'll go ahead and chop through that and see if we can't cut through that insulation that is going to be in there all the way. Uh, and as you can see, the clients did struggle a little bit, cutting through that, that little tiny piece of insulation that runs through there, uh, just so that the wires don't rub up against each other and damage their actual insulation around them. So we'll go ahead and try that one more time. And we were able to get it that time successfully, all the way cut through. So now we'll try that with the channel locks uh, and see if we can not get that first try, and we can. So the channel locks have no problem getting through that. Now this is just a larger version of that piece of insulation. This came out of some MC cable that was uh, part of a demo job we were doing at work. And I uh, figured might as well test to see if these pliers can go ahead and cut through that. So the first we're going to try off the channel locks and see if they can cut through it the first time. Uh, and they can cut through that insulation the first time without any issue. So now we're going to go ahead and try it out with the clients and see if we have the same success. And we do, in fact, have that same success with that. So that was that piece of insulation. And while we have the clients, we're going to bring in some Romex wire and see if we can't cut through this. Um, see if we should be able to do it one-handed. And it's a super smooth cut, too. When you're cutting through uh, that Romex wire with these uh, clines, and we're gonna go ahead and bust out the Kinepa, or excuse me, the channel lock now, and we are able to do that. Definitely not as smooth of a cut, I will say, uh, when you're going through it, but they are able to get through it without an issue. So now we're gonna go ahead and bring in the 12, uh, the 12 gauge Romex or 12 two with ground Romex right here, and definitely a bit of a struggle to do one-handed uh, with the channel locks, but it's definitely doable. So now we're going to go ahead and test out these clines real quick. And it'll be definitely a lot easier to go ahead and cut through that uh, Romex a lot easier. It's definitely a lot easier to cut through the Romex with the clines uh, than it is the channel locks. So overall, uh, when it comes down to it, uh, both of these are a fairly decent pair of pliers. And um, they're both, I, I could easily recommend both of them. But when it comes down to it, if I had to choose a pair of them, I'm going to definitely be choosing the Kleins over the Knipex. And that's simply because the Kleins are a heck of a lot easier to find than the Channel Locks themselves. Uh, like I said before, I believe the Channel Locks are only available down in Australia. Like this, they do sell a pair of combination players. That's slightly different here for us here in the States. Uh, but Klein sells this universal a uh, pair of combination pliers pretty much everywhere you can get it in the states you can get it over in europe and you can obviously get it down in australia as well uh, so that is kind of why when it comes down to it if i you know had to choose between the two it's going to be the klein simply because it's a lot easier to find um but they're both a very fantastic pair of pliers and i could easily recommend both uh, with that being said that's all i have for this video so if you have any questions comments concerns please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and if you're new to the channel and you like tool reviews, please consider hitting that subscribe button. But that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video to be uploaded.